Hi guys and girls, I'm Reef Men, and today we're going to talk about potassium, atomic number 19. Potassium is a alkali metal, which means that it has one electron in its outer shell, and it also means that it's very reactive. It's towards the bottom of the, the uh, periodic table, and as you get to the bottom of the alkali metal row, they become more and more reactive. So this is sort of in the bottom middle of the alkali metals. Uh, I think francium and uh, cesium are more reactive. In our tank, potassium is important for a lot of biological functions, especially in things that move. Um, just like in people, in fish, potassium is involved in nerve impulses. Um, it's involved in a multitude of different cellular processes that need to happen for your fish to survive. Um, potassium is a silvery metal that oxidizes quickly in air. You see that the potassium that I have is under mineral oil and it has a blue layer on it. Um, this is to keep air off of it because it reacts with oxygen and you want the actual metal when you, when you buy a potassium metal. You'll see that potassium does react strongly with water. It uh, quickly sort of uh, turns into potassium hydroxide, releases a lot of uh, heat and also hydrogen gas, which bursts into flames. So um, generally recommended not to throw potassium into water like we're doing here. In your fish tank, potassium will most commonly come from either the food that you're feeding your fish or the salt mix that you're using for uh, water replacements when you do water changes. In humans, we get potassium from things like bananas or things that we eat. Uh, we don't take a potassium supplement usually. And the same in your tank, you're unlikely to need to actually dose potassium. If you're running something like I am where I uh, dose car uh, carbon source, um, I use dose vodka, that generates bacteria. Bacteria use potassium and then I skim out the bacteria so I'm exporting potassium from my tank. And so I dose a little bit of potassium just to make up for that because I do uh, skim out quite a bit of bacteria every day and that lowers the levels of potassium and some other elements in my tank. Go ahead and test for it. It's a simple titration that all you have to do um, to test for it. And if you find that you're low, then you can dose a little bit. Don't dose too much though. Too much potassium is going to cause a lot of trouble in your tank. It's a little bit better to be on the low side than the high side. You'll find that potassium needs to be around 400 parts per million, about the same as you would expect your calcium levels to be for a healthy tank. If your potassium is significantly higher than that, you might start to notice burnt tips on your SPS coral. If it's significantly lower, the symptoms of that are a little bit anecdotal, but things like uh, your SPS receding from the base up, um, especially bird's nest coral seems to be uh, sensitive to low levels of potassium. Potassium-40 is a naturally occurring radioactive isotope of, of potassium. And even though in nature, it's only 0.01% of all the potassium, it is in our bodies, the number one radioactive source that's in uh, the average human body. Um, of course, unless you've done some kind of nuclear medicine or something like that. Potassium is used in the skeletons of the coral that you're growing in your tank. Uh, it's also used in our skeleton. And it, beyond that, is important for nerve impulses and a bunch of other biological functions. If you are doing things like growing ketomorpha or seagrass or something like that in your tank, where you export a lot of algae from your tank, that is going to be reducing the potassium in your in your water because as the potassium or as the algae grows, it uses potassium, and uh, the same way as I have with my bacteria exporting. If you have algae being exported, you're going to be depleting potassium. You might find that if you have blue coral, your potassium levels might play a role in the amount of blue pigment that you see. If you have high potassium levels the zoanthella that are in your coral's tissue are not going to be super happy and actually can be exported from your coral. That overall is a bad thing, but in our tanks, to a certain extent, it's a good thing because the zoanthella algae is actually brown. So if you get rid of some of it, you'll see brighter colors and you'll see more of the color of the coral show through and it won't be blocked by the brown uh, algae that's growing in the tissue of the coral. Specifically, the blue pigment that you get in some coral is 
uh, use or uses potassium in its uh, formation. So if your blue corals specifically are low, um, you might test for potassium and then perhaps dose if you're low. Again, you want to keep it around 400 parts per million or about the same as your calcium level. Thanks for watching. I hope this was interesting. Let me know if you have any questions or comments about potassium in your tank, and I will see you next time. Bye.